Welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to connect data from Kobo Toolbox to Excel so that you can automate data as data collection is still ongoing. I normally do that because it's very efficient. You can set up analysis and if you can repeat what tables whilst data collection is still ongoing. So what you just need to do is to refresh to get data that come in. And once data, the data collection is done, you just move to reporting. That will save you a lot of time, right? Okay. <clears throat> so what you need to do is to go to your data. So here you have your data table um, that probably you can do some validations and so on. So we go to download where we can download the data. Uh, you need to set up how you want your data to appear, the column labels and so on. Click on advanced. You have some settings you can do about multiple response questions uh, and also questions that are in group and so on. And um, also you can... You can set up and then give a name to the setup. It's good to give a name because all activities that you are going to do will be recorded background. So if you give this a name, it will really help. So once you do that, just click on export to save these settings. <clears throat> so when you check down here, um, if you are going to do the normal export, you have to click here and download. And this is hard coded because you always have to do this to get new data that comes in, right? Okay. So once you do this, you go to settings and then click on sharing. So we need to do some setups here. All right. So you need to check this two box um, that allows anyone to view um, the form and so on. Um, one thing too, you have to notice that if you have sensitive data, um, you have to, uh, there's a way that you can sign in when you are connecting to Excel to avoid that. Okay. So once we do this, um, we, are, we have set up how we want our data to be exported. So now we need a URL because we are going to use, if you go to Excel, um, get data, click here, go to data. There are so many ways you can import data to Excel. So, but we are going to use um, other sources, which is web. So here we need a URL to be able to connect and get our data, right? So how do we get this URL from Cobalt Toolbox? So we come to Cobalt Toolbox. We need um, this setup. So you have a URL. We have API and these are the extensions we have. So we need two information. One is um, information about our account, whether we are using the general account that has the Cobalt Toolbox.org or we are using the EU version. So that's what we need. And we also need an asset unique ID that links us directly to our project. Okay. So um, we once we have these two, we need to just, let's just copy this to, and then open a new tab and paste this. So we have to clean out this one. So we need to go to our project. If you check here, you see that we have this. This is the, uh, we are using, I'm using the doc doc.org. So if you are also using the EU for human trade or which account, you have to check that. In. So we just replace that with this one. And then um, this one that comes, so I am under form, so that's why I'm seeing forms here. And then we also have this one, um, so you have forms. So this this ID here, this this section here is the asset unique ID. So you copy that, and then you come and replace it here. All right, so what is happening is that connect from this account that we have we are using this um doc -oc version uh, api is going to yeah we want to look for an api that is linked to that um with an extension of v2 under asset and then that asset id is this and under that asset id we want to go directly to export settings so once we have that we just click on we just press enter and then we are on the asset export setting. So here um, you just scroll down and go to current endpoint. So this current endpoint, if you see, you see this is the extension of um, the URL that we, you know, we set up. So we are under export settings. So under here, this is the last activity that we did under export settings. So if you check here, we have the unique ID, the URL, to that account and so that links us here. So we want to get a URL that we can paste in our Excel URL to 
get the data there. So these are the links. So we, there are two versions of files. You have CSV file that you can export. You also have uh, Excel file. So if you click this link, you'll be able to download just like the normal download in CSV file. If you also click here, you can download as Excel file. But we don't want to do that. We want to rather link. So we copy this one. Um, it's advisable to always use the Excel URL because um, it has an advantage over the CSV. Uh, once you have some group skips, uh, it wouldn't work well with the CSV. So that is it. So why do we need to name? So you realize that this last activity that we did, we gave it a name. So where um, you are not coming directly to the export settings where you want to learn, there will be so many activities that are recorded. So you may have to search for where you want to um, really get the URL. So in that case, the name will really help. And then you see the last modified version of that activity. So it's good to check the date too and see that that was the last activity that we did. All right, so we, we want to get the Excel version. So we just copied this URL under the quotation marks and then we just copy this, then go to our Excel um, if you want, you can let me repeat this step. So you go to get data. So and that from data, just like how you import, um, you load data uh, to Power Query. So you go to get data from other sources, select from web, and then you paste this. All right. So under advanced, you need to do some setups here. So just select basic and proceed. All right. So um, if your account is, if you if you don't set it as public, or there will be some auth authentications with your Excel, um, depending on if there are some authentications you have to do, you have to sign in uh, with your Kobo toolbox before you can uh, really get to here. So I don't need to sign in. All right. So once I have this, uh, I can just go to um, so this is the data file that I have. I can preview on the right hand side and then I can load direct to Excel or I can click on transform data and open it up in Power Query, right? So if you want to do cleanliness in Power Query before you generate your pivot tables, you can do that and so that you, you can't, you will just generate pivot tables straightforward. If you also want, you can load it to Excel and then you load it back from Excel, you can then load it back to uh, to Power Query so that you can always see the data before it gets to Power Query and then do analysis and generate uh, data back. So let's load to Excel. All right. So we have our data here. Um, let's resize this. Uh, just a few of them. All right, so this is the data we have. So anytime that data comes in, um, according to the documentations of uh, Kobo Toolbox, it will be automatically refreshed every five minutes. So anytime you want to see new data coming in, um, you just click come here, refresh, and then it will, the new data will come. So what is happening is that when the data is coming, it will come as a new Excel file. So any cleaning that you do here wouldn't work. Any new, anytime new data comes, it will replace the old one. So it's advisable to rather move the cleaning or you do quality checks um, on Kobo Toolbox um, data table, you remove some columns that you don't need and so on. And then or uh, questions that you flag, responses you flag and so on, then you, before you move it here. So once we have it here, we can load our data to Power Query. So we have from table or range and load it to Power Query. So all the cleaning that we need to do, we can do all the cleanings that we, we need to do and so on. So once we do that, um, you can just close and load and add this to a data model. So we want to generate a pivot table report in a new sheet. Uh, I already have a sheet here, pivot table. So I can add this to a data models and then um, and click here where I want the pivot table to be, and then I have it. All right, so here um, I can have, um, so if I want to know the number of uh, respondents in the survey, uh, we have ID, uh, a unique ID. So I can put this one under the row force, and then 
um, I can count by distinct because that column is numeric. So, so I have 32, so I can name this as sample. All right, so let's say respondents. Then I can do some settings here uh, for the pivot table and then copy this one down here. And if I want to look at, uh, let's say I pick a question here um, and drop it. I can't, I have a question where we ask them how they got to know about the brand and so on. So I can set up, break down um, quotas if I have quotas and be monitoring how many males do we have, how many females have we achieved and so on. So once you do this, uh, anytime you want a new data to come, you just go to refresh. And then once you refresh, all your pivot tables will refresh. So you, you don't need to always download the data from Google Toolbox. All right, that is it. So I will just, uh, I will add the URL um, uh, in the comments so you can just uh, copy.